Hello viewers, once again you are welcome to the Faith Cruise Network. Today we want to talk about something very interesting and something you would also like. We have again our brother Frederick with us to dive into this very particular issue. We want to understand if God truly exists. There's a question that says, is the, uh, is the evidence is the lack of evidence evidence that there is no God? The lack of evidence is it evidence that there is no God? So today we are going to dive into this. Let's welcome our brother, our friend. Welcome once again to the much. Faith Cruise Network. Thank you very much. Now, it's lack of evidence. Evidence that there is no God. Um, this question suggests two things in mind. One is that the person has not done enough research to bring about this evidence of God. Or that God, after creation, should have inscribed his name on the very things he created. So you'd have seen on the trees made by God as inscribed by people made in China, made in Tokyo and made in Ghana and a whole lot of stuff. But should the question be asked that way or should be diverted to see is God really interested in existence or God is interested in relationship? So is God interested in relationship? Or in okay, from that we can see that God is more interested in a relationship than in existence. Okay, how so? Now, God in Genesis chapter number one says, In the beginning, Elohim Barach, which is to mean God created. So the word Elohim suggests plurality, which means God was in different forms of manifestation. So, just right in the chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, we see God manifest himself in the spirit in the verse 2, and the word of God coming into being, which is Jesus, according to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was God, and the word was with God, the word was God at the end of the day. So, which means that God manifestation presents Elohim. So, Elohim is God in relationship. So in Genesis chapter number 1 verse 26, it says, let us, this suggests that God does not want to work alone. He wants to work with people. So God is a God of relationship. God does not want to work alone. So after creating man, we see God come in the cool of the day to always interact with man. So God is always a God in relationship. Now let's understand God in existence as well, as we've looked at the relationship aspect of God. Now, God in existence can be seen in scripture and can also be seen by some theorists or some school of thoughts. So we see Paul admonish a lot of people with revelational knowledge. According to Romans chapter number 1 from verse 18 to 21. Romans chapter number 1 verse 18, I read, For there is a revelation of the wrath of God from heaven against all the wrongdoings and evil thoughts of men who keep down what is true by wrongdoing. 19. Because the knowledge of God may be seen in them, God have made it clear to them. For from the first making of the world, those things of God which the eye is unable to see, that is, his eternal power and existence are fully made clear. He, he having given the knowledge of them through the things of which he has made, so that men have no reason for wrongdoing. 21. Because having the knowledge of God, they did not give glory to God as God, and did not give praise, but their minds were full of foolish things and their hearts, being without sins, were made dark. This scripture suggests something in our local 
understanding which we see that someone does not show a child God or someone does not teach a child God. So if you ask where God is, the child simply points up, which means God is in heaven. Yeah. So this scripture is trying to tell us that even without evidence, mm -hmm. going through the scientific laws of understanding and a whole lot of apparatus there, God is seen in creation. So God is inherent in creation. He validates everything in creation. So God creating is first the evidence of his existence. So if you cannot see the existence of God in proving otherwise, then look at creation. Except you don't believe that everything created is by God. But since everything came by another being, we see God in creation. Now, we have other schools of thought like the cosmological arguments. They argue that everything has a cause. And since everything has a cause, then the existence of the earth meant that there is someone that began it. And who could that be? Uh, who, who could that be? It's, it's no other but God himself. So God is seen in creation. And we have the moral argument. This moral argument suggests that we have good and evil. Now, who sets the pace for good and evil? It is not man. Why? Because man has fallen. And if man has fallen, then man cannot be the very person to set the standard of good or evil. Which means there is a moral law and that moral law can only be set by a higher personality. And that higher personality is no other but, but God. This tells us that God sets the standard for morality. It is in it man is able to know which is good and which is bad. Now, with the understanding of all this, we want to know how these two relations, God's God in relationship and God in existence, is existence. How do these two um, relate? Now, God in existence means God wants a relationship. So God exists and he wants a relationship. So your inability to understand God exists means you cannot have a relationship with him. But God is more interested in a relationship than for you to know he is God. So does the fact that God exists mean that we have a lot of people to follow God? No. So the fact that God has come to inscribe on the planet that I am God. I created the sea. I created it. If God, if you wake up one day and we see that, will that change a lot of people's mind that there is something called God? Even with, with what you just said, if we look into the Bible, upon all the great things that God did, when we look at what he did for the Israelites, passing through this Red Sea and all that, that was great. That was a great act and you should have made man even understand that there's something greater. Sure. Yes, though, we don't have much people following God. Yeah. The, the very people. people who follow God, even at when he does a miracle, they come back to see he didn't do anything. So these are people who even walked with God to Canaan, the promised land. And this is evident in his manifestation as a son on earth when he came. We see people who are believers and unbelievers. And even at the right sense of him performing a miracle, we have people who still disbelieve. So if your lack of evidence, which means your lack of ignorance, and Bible says lack of knowledge, my people are perishing. So the reason we are perishing is because we lack knowledge. And Bible said evidentially that it's because we have rejected knowledge. So if we want to understand the existence of God and the relationship of God, we must come to the knowledge of God. And we must be ready to accept and forget what we already know or make more evidences clear in what we already know. Yeah. But then, um, due to man's knowledge, quest for knowledge, we will be yearning to know more. That is how come I believe all these questions are coming up. Sure. There are lots of things people say due to something they have read or something they have investigated on their own. And it's because of this continuous knowledge we now have science. Sure. And then there's this question that anything that is scientifically proven, 
or mathematically derived should be thrown into the trash can. Now, as believers, as Christians, how does it, this very thing being said, how does it relate to our faith? Now, the question of what is not scientifically proven or mathematically derived is a trash. Uh, the question in itself cannot be scientifically proven or mathematically derived. So it's a trash and must be thrown into the trash can because we cannot verify that statement. But to understand further, we will see that God is not a God trying to fit into the concept of science and mathematics. Okay. It has always been science and mathematics trying to understand a non-existential being which they claim doesn't exist. Now, science has always been discovering. They do not create. They always discover things. So, if they discover, it means the thing was in existence. Now, how did the thing come into existence? We trace that to a higher person. And that person is no other but God. So, science cannot prove the existence of God. Because God himself isn't in science. It is science that tries in a way to fit himself around God. Now, we have people who, even after listening to what you've said, will still be blind, are still blinded by what they already know. And how do we deal with this, this kind of people? Okay. We have people who have made up their mind not to accept other people's view. And I want to throw this challenge to us all that whatever you believe should be tested. Okay. And so long as what is tested is proven otherwise, we believe it. So if what you believe is proven, tested, and comes credible, we believe it. So what you believe, bring it on board. Let's test it and see if it stands the test of time. If it is indeed testing time, then we believe it. If it doesn't, then we throw it away. And you accept new truth into your life. And the only way you can grow is to accept people challenge you in your area of belief. If you only believe what you believe based on what you have found out, then the question around your belief is also a question. So, people who have decided not to believe the existence of God is either because they have refused to know there is God or refused the very existential evidences of God in creation. So, such people should come on board Bring your belief system on board, let it be tested, and if it is proven otherwise, we move with it. Well, it's unfortunate that those people do not have anything to show. Sure, because evidence. if they have any evidence, then their lack of evidence is not evidence that God doesn't exist. Because there are thousand and one people that say God exists. So your one call among the thousand doesn't prove anything otherwise. It is a mass carried the crown. Sure. Okay. Now, um, however we look at it, science has come to stay. Other people's view has come to stay. Theories have come to stay. So whatever, we want to know the relationship between science and the Bible. How does it mean? Because the Bible is going to be in existence and science is also there. However we may talk about it, they will still try to disprove the existence of God. Okay. I want to state again that the Bible existed long before the first man discovered it. Later, eh? Now, if science has come to prove that man came from the ape by Charles Darwin, then we must ask yourself, why is it that more apes aren't turning into man till now? Where is it in any historical evidence that an ape just turned to man and has come to add up to the family of man? We've not seen one. But that ideology and theory still exist. Yeah. And people believe that ideology than to believe in the Bible. And the Bible which has been in existence has proved himself over time. And I'm trying to tell you that science is not to prove the existence of God. Science alone cannot prove the existence of God because science has not been able to solve its own problems. And there is something which scientists always struggle with, which is coincidence. They always believe in forming a hypothesis, going through the procedure, drawing some conclusions, some predictions, and coming up with conclusions. 
And they've drawn all these things and they've realized that God is in existence. So the one, one scientist among the many scientists cannot shut the very voices that first laid the first principle of science to believe that there is God. So science in existence, but God has been in existence before science himself. So science traces its origin to God, not God tracing its origin to science. Science is now um, tracing itself to God, not God tracing himself into science. So however we may try to talk about it, try to frame it, science is still under God. Now, science himself has failed over the years. We came to a time where we see the earth was flat. We came, they say the earth was brown. They say the earth was that. They say the earth was that. And now we have the earth which is round. So over the years, science have proven, disproved, approved, disproved, approved, and disproved. But Bible has been constant. And it is still constant till today. But science can come back and tell us what they said is not as they see it now. It has changed. And we have the cosmic belief which says that there was a stone that was going to come. Up to today, the stone hasn't come. It was by scientific proven. And we see scripture prove the coming of a savior. And the savior really came, lived with history, birth, born, written down, evidentially, with other religious books. And it is true. And such a person who was prophesied will come, is prophesied again, is gonna come again. So this should tell you, Bible has been consistent. Science has always... So if we try to use science to justify Bible, we are wrong. It is rather the Bible, which is authoritative of all other belief systems. Well, viewers, however we may try to see it, or however we may try to look at it, God's existence is something we cannot fathom or we cannot try to use our human imagination to try to understand. However it is, God was in existence before the creation of anything and before science. It is science that is trying to fix itself into God's creation. So what we want to admonish to you today we want you to understand that God is in existence. Whether you try proving it or not, God is in existence. However, whatever scientific proof, process, hypothesis you have, there is God and God was in existence before you even came to even think about trying to prove it. So, my friend, before we end today's session, we want to have a last word. On this very topic. God is a God and He has been God. Our lack of evidence or our evidences does not prove He exists or He doesn't exist. God is God with or without us. We cannot make up God. But God has always tried to form a relationship with us. So instead of focusing on the existence of God, let us dive into finding a relationship with God. Instead of focusing on whether to prove God is in existence, let's try, let's endeavor to have a relationship with God. That is what is going to help us in our life. Trying to prove God's existence isn't going to tell you or to prove whether God is in existence or not. Thank you for making time with us today. As well, we'll come your way next week with another video. We and the word that you find a Bible believing church and then attend. If you don't have Christ in your life, accept Christ and then your life will never be the same. Thank you.